Hello and welcome to our video module on statics. We're going to jump into some really cool stuff today. We're going to start looking at what's going on inside all those beams we've been looking at. So on your left, I've drawn a really simple problem, probably something very similar to one you've seen plenty of times, and that's a simply loaded beam. We're applying 100 newtons in the middle, 5 meters on either side, makes it really simple. We're going to split it up so we have 50 newtons at either side of reaction force. Uh, we'll call this uh, we'll call this A and we'll call this B. However, I'm going to ask a, a funky question. How is this 100 newtons, how does it get transferred to each of these reaction points? What's going on inside the beam? How does this point at A, how does it feel this 100 newtons? How does this point at B, how does it feel the 100 newtons? How does it move across this beam? In order to figure this out, I'm going to draw for you some free body diagrams. The first free body diagram is we're, we're going to cut this beam right here, say at one meter, one meter. Because if I cut it at one meter, we know that with our free body diagram, we um, include all the forces. And in a surface we cut, which is, you know, we're cutting the beam, we'll see what the forces are in that surface. So if I cut it in the in the surface of the beam, I get to learn what's going on inside of that beam. Let's draw that right now. Perfect. Here we are. We have our bar, one meter long. We have 50 newtons applied on the left hand side. What's going on at this surface? There's no other forces, so any forces have to be acting on this surface right here. Well, we know that the thing isn't uh, isn't accelerating it. It's, it's totally static, so we know the sum of the forces has to be the zero, and the sum of the torques has to be zero. Well, if the, the force is pushing up on the left-hand side, that means we need to have an equal and opposite force on the right-hand side of 50 newtons. So somehow, what's happening here is that the beam is transferring some of that force at this surface directly down. But that's not all that's happening. If we're drawing a free body diagram, it can't rotate either. Let's make this point a pivot. Now, at that pivot, we have 50 newtons operating at one meter. So what this beam is trying to do right now, it's trying to rotate. It's trying to go like this. Well, we know it's not doing that. So at this surface, the only place this stuff can act, at that surface, we have an equal and opposite moment fighting it. And in order to find out how much it's fighting, we take this force times this distance. So we know that it's 50 Newton meters. And that is whatever the, uh, the downward force is, 50 Newtons times whatever the distance is. And in this case, the distance is one meter. All right, so we know that the two things that are happening inside the beam is that there's a downward force and this bending moment of 50 Newton meters. Well, the downward force, we call that shear. And what that tries to do is, let's say we take a small, a small block here, and it's not going to rotate for some reason. We're just kind of keeping that from happening. We push up and we push down, and what that tries to do to the material, and if the material, if it's strong enough, the material will fail, and this will happen. We call this shear. It's like an earthquake. This is what happens with earthquakes. We have one side get push, pushed up, the other side gets pushed down. All right, the next thing is bending moment. What This is what we call this term, this 50 Newton meters. It's trying to bend the, uh, the whole beam, and it's doing it basically to preserve equilibrium. But what does that mean? Um, I always think of uh, Gumby when I think of this. Maybe that's from like a childhood of playing with them. But if you tr take this perfect beam, this perfect area right here, and you try and bend it one way and then the other way, what would happen if you succeed? What would happen if the material fails or if the material gives in to your will? It would look like this. It would try to bend it. So you can see where we get these names. Now that, that's all fine and good. We're, we're getting a feel for what's happening. But I'd like to know, I'd like to explore 
at beyond just this one meter point, that, that we know what's happening, but how does the shear and the bending moment, how does that change and morph throughout the entire beam? Well, let's draw two more uh, shear diagrams. One will be, um, or I'm not shear diagrams, um, free body diagrams. One will be just on the other side of that 100 newtons. And then the, uh, the final one will be, say, at the 7 meter mark. So right here. Go ahead and see if you can do it on your own. When you come, uh, I'll pause this, pause this for a second. When you come back, I'll have them drawn out. Great. Let's start with the uh, free body diagram that includes the 100 newtons pushing down. So here we've gone ahead and drawn what's happening. However, let's take a look at this surface. Let's balance this. Okay. We're going to balance this, and um, right at this surface we have 100 newtons down, 50 up. So we know that right here there has to be another 50 newtons pushing up. So we can extrapolate and say, okay, to the next to the next uh, item, not extrapolate, but we can take a look at our next item. What's happening here? Well, we know that the sum of these forces is 50 newtons, and that's trying to rotate this whole thing. It's trying to rotate it in this direction. Well, we know that this is all basically operating at five meters. So if the sum of these is 50 newtons, uh, they're basically operating at the same place, 50 newtons, and that's being applied at 5 meters, and it's trying to rotate it in the clockwise direction. We know, therefore, that within this surface right here, we have 250 newton meters inside that surface inside that surface. Now that's really interesting. Um, let's take take a quick look and see if we can understand that a little bit. All right, so so take a look at number one. Number one, it was to the left of the 100 newtons applied, right? And if we had changed this to two meters, the shear, it wouldn't have changed. Doesn't matter how long this thing is. There's 50 on the left. There has to be 50 on the right. So the shear doesn't change. Well, but if we change the meters to two meters, the bending moment does change because now we have 50 newtons times whatever that distance is. So that bending moment's going to keep getting bigger and bigger the further we get away from this side until. As you look at this, we have our 50 newtons down until you're all the way over here and you're looking at 250 newton meters. Now let's take a look at the third one, third um, situation with the yellow free body diagram and see what we can learn from that. All right, so here's our free body diagram. Once again, we can do our vertical shear first. We know it's all still acting at this point, at, that, uh, at, at this surface right here. So we know that upwards, 50 newtons. Let's try and figure out what the um, what the reaction of bending moment is. We still know that um, this wants to rotate in this direction. We know because uh, we we just have a feel for that. We have you know we'll take a look at this. You have at this point you have a hundred newtons at five meters and then you have this 50 newtons this 50 newtons is fighting this this you have like a hundred you know you have this huge amount trying to rotate it in this direction but then this shear right there it, it's lessening it it's making it a little bit less and in fact if you run all the math you'll see that the reaction here is 150 newton meters so this is really interesting. What we've seen if we look at um, the left hand side or to the left of where this 100 newtons has been applied, that moment keeps on getting bigger and bigger and the shear is always up 50 newtons. But now, now, oh, whoops, whoops, we have a mistake here. Let's, let's correct this mistake. Over here, I said that, um, oh no, it's right. It's going up 50 newtons and here it's going up 50 newtons. Um, the shear is now going up 50 newtons. On the left-hand side, it's going down 50 newtons. But something else interesting is happening. 
the moment is getting less. And you can imagine that as this 50, as this 50 right here, as it gets further and further away, its influence is going to keep on getting bigger and bigger if you're rotating around this point. And in fact, if you go all the way, it goes down to zero. But we can see that this is trying to decrease the moment. Stay tuned on our next module when we look at this quantitatively and get a better feel for how shear and bending moment varies across the beam.